This is a special edition of Late Night Health. I'm Mark Allen. We are at Supply Side West in Las Vegas, and uh, we're going to spend some time with Sandra Lee, who is the CEO of NJ Labs, NJ New Jersey, and they've just celebrated their 85th anniversary. You look terrific for oh, 80, I know, 85 right? years, right? <laughs> Thank you. It's, yeah. uh, it's the Asian genes. <laughs> ah, I see. Um, tell us, first of all, what, what does NJ Labs do? And New Jersey Laboratories is a third-party contract laboratory. So we work with a lot of manufacturers that are buying APIs or selling APIs, raw materials, excipients, anywhere from cosmetics to nutraceuticals to supplements um, and pharmaceutical products. Some food, but it's mostly nutraceutical and pharmaceutical. You're actually kind of a, a guardian of consumers, aren't you? Yes, so one of our principles is to making sure that whatever we do has a good positive impact on the industry. We go into testing because it's so critical that the consumers who are buying these products know what they're buying. And it's, we are the gateway before everyone starts to consume it because they're trusting us, right? They're trusting the manufacturers and the testing laboratories that what we're putting out on the market is safe for them to consume. So we are kind of like guardian angels. It's the last stop before everyone starts to buy it on the shelves. I think we should change the name. <laughs> Guardian angels of people. Well, one of the things that a lot of consumers in particular, and some manufacturers don't know, is that it's required to have third-party testing for nutraceuticals. Yes. Nutraceuticals are vitamins, by the way. Right. It is a very good thing to have in regulations because, again, it's to protect the consumers. They don't know what they're buying. And they trust these labels. So a lot of these manufacturers, they have to test what they buy, when it comes in, making sure it's not contaminated because anything can actually happen from shipping to receiving. So to receive it, you should always verify what you're buying is correct, identity, purity, potency. Um, heavy metals is a huge concern lately, especially in baby food. People have been talking about it more and more. Oh my. <laughs> One of the things that baby foods are now having heavy metal problems? Yes, because keep in mind baby foods, organic or whatnot, um, it's made from plants, fruits, vegetables, uh, and a lot of it gets you know, sucked into the plant. And when they're extracting um, and pureeing the food, it's, it's coming from plants and they could have heavy metals in it. So that has become a hot topic lately, especially with parents. You know, I have three kids of my own, so it's always been a concern. Uh, you can always adopt me. <laughs> so I guess what happens is that the vegetables they're growing, they, they have uh, right. me heavy metals, and it's concentrated in the food. It could be, and over time, you know, babies don't have the capabilities to process. Most human beings don't have capabilities to process contaminants like heavy metals, arsenic, lead, cadmium, mercury. So we need to protect the kids. However, the argument on the flip side is, but it's natural, it's growing in the soil. You know, how can you ex like just separate out all those contaminants? It's in the environment. So there should be a quite a bit of balance and a lot of it can be protecting the consumers through testing properly. And that testing again, yeah. most consumers aren't aware that there are FDA regulations saying test, test product as it comes in, yes. as it goes into a capsule, yes. and when it's finally, finally in that done. formulation. Right. It's a three-step process. Yes. It's a federal law. During manufacturing, anything can happen. You know, we have quality systems put in place, but Again, you can't control every aspect from beginning to end. So you check to see if it's safe throughout the process by testing. That's how you can confirm it. it absolutely. All right, we have to talk a little okay. bit about Sandra Lee, okay? <laughs> Sandra Lee and I had um, something in common, okay? We both sucked at chemistry in high school. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, you're, you, you have a degree in, in, in uh, chemistry. Yes, I have a bachelor's in science for chemistry, concentration in chemistry, and then I have a master's to teach chemistry, um, mostly at high school level because I love the education aspect. I believe science should be taught at a very young age. It shouldn't wait until ninth grade or tenth grade. It should be built into our educational system, which right now there's deficiencies. Absolutely. So I went into that as well. Well, I can remember blowing up a desk in seventh grade uh, uh, science class. Uh, but women today, uh, science 
offer so many opportunities and somebody who in high school didn't do so well in chemistry you're now teaching it at a high school level wow or have the ability to do that you're too busy running and j lab is this a good good thing i mean for women to look into engineering chemistry physics as careers they didn't used to do that right even growing up i had a lot of pressure you had to do sports play three instruments or get straight a's take all the ap and honors classes that they offer and that's physically impossible but I got very lucky at that I have a very strong mother who yeah. pushed me to the very ends. And I have also, out of my three kids, I have two daughters. And I think growing up in the Asian community, you're expected to do certain things. And when I kind of broke that mold, it was hard. It was hard as a female, it's hard as an Asian. And it's even more difficult in an industry that is not female dominant either. You know, you're, we're trying to find that balance. We're working together. And I have the privilege and the honor to work with an amazing, well-balanced management team. You know, half men, half female, all different backgrounds. Does not matter where they're from. And so I think we got really, really lucky with NJ Labs and our staff. Which brings the question of a young woman mm -hmm. became the CEO of a big company. <laughs> so before I got to this point, a lot of doors shut in my face. I got turned down by J&J, &J, Colgate, uh, Bristol Myers Squibb. Then nobody wanted to hire me. There was this period where I took time off to be a mother. And after my divorce, I really wanted to get back into what I love doing. And it was so hard to find a job. And it was, unless I knew somebody, it was very difficult. New Jersey Laboratories had started as a very small company. And now we've grown quite a bit in the last several years. Um, I got very lucky because my boss who hired me was also female. You know, she wasn't an Asian minority, um, but she was a female. And she was all about sharing everything that she knew with me. And I hope that I can do the same thing for other females too. Your two daughters, how old are they? I have 11 year old and 14. I feel like that's a pop quiz because half the time I get it wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, the, which, one, which one knows, the, knows everything? The 14 year old. She is my mini-me, um, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but man, she has an attitude. She is so sassy, and I'm so glad that she's a strong, individual, young woman. I think that's, <laughs> that's, that's terrific. We need more of that. We need more women in science, in media, in everything. To, because we, we, everybody should have the same equal rights. I'm gonna ask you, uh, I'm doing a, 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 a semi-regular program mm -hmm. on, on bigotry and hatred. And have you run into um, uh, the Asian hate that has permeated the news in the last few months? Yes. So going to grocery store, I went one time with my brother. And I was looking for something in particular. And he's like, stop touching everything. Everyone's staring at you. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And they were. They were standing about a few feet away from us and just watching me go, just lift a couple of boxes because I was looking for something in particular. And I couldn't find it. And I was like, you know what? I don't even want to buy it. So for some time, I didn't even go grocery shopping. I did everything online from an app. Um, I wasn't afraid, but it was just too much of a hassle the last few months. And thankfully at our company, we're, we are so diverse that I didn't experience anything like that. And I, I don't think anyone else did in the company. And we try to keep it very well educated and diverse. Right. But outside of the company in our safe zone, um, we did experience that. I was for some time afraid to go out by myself. Oh my, you know? <laughs> I, 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 I've had some hatred, some prejudice, but Nothing like that. Mm -hmm. uh, come on, people, get it together. We're <laughs> all people. Um, your daughters, either one interested in science, or are they going to go into um, media? And, and Amy and I will talk them <laughs> out of that. So I don't know, but if they get anything less than an A in science, I'm like, 
whose kid are you? <laughs> like, you have a mom and a dad who's really good at math and science, and what happened? But they're really interested in it. I don't know if they want to make a career out of it, but they're interested in the fact that, it's like, they're like, do you run a company? Are you the manager? Are you the boss? And I'm like, what are you more interested in? The <laughs> fact that I have power and I can exercise it, or the fact that I'm in science? Um, my oldest may be, she's really, you know, she's very invested in learning the science classes and the English and the writing right now. But I'm, I'm not sure what she's going to do. And I, I don't think I want to put that same pressure. I just want her to have a positive influence in this, maybe this industry or another industry. Having a positive yeah. childhood at the same time. Three, yeah. not three instruments? <laughs> no, I have offered and they're like, no, no. And their response is, well, my friends, I don't really care if my friends do it. You know, it's something that we would want to do if we want to. Right. I do have a baby grand piano. Um, and at the beginning, I was like, don't touch. And it was a mistake. After about a week, I said, okay, you guys can touch, you can explore. And so they got their iPad and downloaded some apps and they were playing it for a little bit. But they lose interest, you know, like all kids. Right. My mom, um, she was very, very stubborn. <laughs> so <laughs> she said, you're not quitting anything until you have accomplished everything that you could. But music became an outlet for me, just like sports. Um, it, when it was difficult, because in my high school, there was only five Asians growing up. Okay. And so we kind of faced that hatred since a young age, getting made fun of for our eyes or our hair color or skin color. Uh, I learned to ignore it, but sometimes it's difficult. No, it, it I, it's terrible. <laughs> Uh, there's ageism, mm -hmm. uh, uh, anti-Semitism, anti-Asian, anti-black. Mm -hmm. I've never understood that. Um, in our remaining couple of moments, mm -hmm. let's, let's go back and talk about NJ Labs. Mm -hmm. One of the things here at Supply Side West mm -hmm. is, is there are so many companies that are promoting CBD. Are you doing yeah. testing on CBD? So actually it's a little bit different from what other companies are doing. We've been in the um, space for marijuana testing since six years ago. I had seen it, that it was going to become something that could grow into a real industry like it has today. And we had worked with the FDA and the DEA to submit proposals, how we're going to test, what kind of instrumentation we're going to use, and what we're going to do with it about six years ago. And it took us two years to get the license, but we got it. And we have been working with a couple of companies who were in that space for medicinal purposes. As CBD became federally legal, or in terms of hemp-derived products became federally legal, we have gone more into that space. We, you know, I've been talking to so many people, they said, I Googled this, I Googled that, and I was like, I know, Google has so much great information. But what we wanted to challenge was, what's the difficulty of testing for cannabis products? What's the science behind it? And what have we seen in the last two years during development and validation? purposes because right now there's no regulations so we're treating it as if FDA has already set in and cannabinoids testing for heavy metals micro residual solvents mycotoxins all that as if it's a pharmaceutical product already wow. so if you start at a higher standard it's so much easier and at the same time do you do you test to make sure that the the milligrams you know the the, the amount potency, of yes. the potency yes the biggest complaint in this industry right now is inconsistencies in results, right? Between laboratories, between different companies, different batches, or even repeat testing on the same batch, right? Why are we getting different results? And that's because when you test at a single data point, you don't see what's really going on behind the scenes. The stuff, when we look at a solution is clear to the naked eye, ooh, it looks good, right? But there are things that the instrumentation can see that we can't see. Absolutely. And you Absolutely. need to develop appropriate methods and then validate it for ruggedness, robustness, so it's consistent in the future. Uh, seniors should know that if you want, if you, you know, if you're interested in learning mm -hmm. about what you're taking, yes. they could go to your website, I, I believe, and, and learn. Uh, uh, about testing and why it's important to have your products examined and mm -hmm. scientifically evaluated. I've said this before, almost every major uh, uh, ingredient company has the word science mm -hmm. in their, their, yeah. their taglines because it's so important right now to know that supplements are scientifically based. 
gets me so upset I'm getting it, <laughs> right? Right, and there are so many different questions that people have. So we are actually in the process of recording a new mini-series podcast slash video to talk about what we've learned. Not to show that we're better or what other companies are not doing, but just what we've learned. And we'd like to share that knowledge because sharing is caring yes, in this case, not absolutely. during COVID times. But in case of education, we're all about consumer safety because we don't want any products out there. Our families are taking these products. We want to make sure it's safe. Yeah, absolutely. All right, last Yep. Last point here, uh, we have a sister program called Mark Allen Cooks Your Dinner. <laughs> we, we are, do you cook at home? I, I do cook, but my brother's the chef. Um, I enjoy cooking Korean food, and I think I'm pretty decent at it. <laughs> Ooh, that's my favorite food. <laughs> so there's LA, or LA actually LA. has really good Korean food. Yes. Las Vegas actually does too. So yeah. Um, yeah, I do enjoy cooking if I'm cooking for people, but for myself, not as much. Well, maybe you'll come in and give me a recipe and, and cook with us, okay? Sure. All right, that'd be <laughs> great. Fine. Kimchi is one of my favorite <laughs> things. I always have at least one kind in my refrigerator. That's amazing. It, uh, um, somebody told me I was Asian in my last life. You know, kimchi keeps you young. I'm sorry? <laughs> kimchi keeps you young. Yes, oh, it's probiotic too. Yeah, yeah it's right? really good for it's you. really, really good for you. Yeah. Uh, the radish, oh, uh, I won't get going. Uh, NJ Labs, uh, uh, njlabs.com? Yes, www.njlabs.com. Totally. All right, this is Late Night Help. I'm Mark Allen. We'll see you soon.